Hello there. So I'm back. Uh, to Grant and and the channel in general, not not to life. I was not dead, okay? So I made a vampire deck, and uh, I thought like, hey, let's make a deck guide because it's been ages. So let's go from top to bottom because technically, how you wanna play uh, decks these days is that you wanna have your best cards for last, and that's generally how you want your deck. I mean, yeah, your your hand to look like in the last round. So you mostly wanna be holding. Uh, golds. Unseen Elder requires devotion, so bleeding to a unit and uh, randomly bleeds units uh, by two and also speeds up uh, bleeds. I'm going to assume that you guys are somewhat familiar with the cards. Blood Moon is 16 points for 10 over time, so it kind of needs no introduction. I think is yes, when you look at the, the value uh, per provision uh, of the Vampire package, it looks very juicy. Very, very juicy. But it can be a little... Uh, fragile. So that's why we have the cave troll here. He is uh, a, a big fatso who is hiding Oriana and Unseen Elder most of all. Oriana can steal the game. Unseen Elder can also steal the game. And uh, just, just the vampires have just a bunch of amazing units. But they could struggle a little bit with control. And Karen Tier uh, also can copy Ariana, can copy Unseen Elder, and that laugh, it's basically just another Crimson Curse. If I just calculate his value, that's 6, plus a Blood Moon, that's like 8 points, because of the extra vampires, so it's like, that's already 14, and he can also hit people, cooldown 1, uh, the, the value is just ridiculous. But you need these guys to uh, stay up, not get locked, so that's why we have the Cape Troll in there. <clears throat> By the way, a Karen Tier can combo with many, many other units, like uh, the Beast, that's an amazing combo, you can also combo with Nekurat, but of course, the best combos might be Oriana and Unseen Elder and, and the Beast. Uh, Protoflutter is just a, a good old reliable card. Goliath is a good finisher, uh, the big problem with the Bleed deck that we just have a lot of value, but we don't really have amazing finishers, and that's why having uh, NL Conquerors and uh, Goliath kind of helps. This distribute uh, just finds the Crimson Curse and also uh, has a way to find Feast of Blood. Feast of Blood and King of the Night has access to Purify. Purify mainly serves as a, as a way to get rid of taunts. Because if the enemy has a taunt on a row, then you are forced to target all your bleeds on that unit. And you don't want one guy with 20 bleeds on it. You want everyone to ha enjoy the party. So that's why Purify is kind of important, but you don't want to go overboard with it because if you see veils or whatever, like you don't you don't care about that. You just want to leave that alone. It's not really worth purifying that, even though it's super annoying, but it's not really worth uh, purifying that. A parry and Phantom is just very reliable. Gale tends to get insane value, and in this deck, it's just a must-have. There's really not much weakness to this deck, other than the fact that we need a long grand free, so we have to go. A hard round one and also some cards can really uh run away because we don't have hard control here we just slowly killing stuff so it's kind of a value generator deck that has some control in it like over time we kill stuff kind of but if they are like instantly dangerous that, that could be tricky a flutter just a value generator that gains vitality and uh garcane is pretty much the same thing. Garkin is a little better, but like they're basically the same thing. Up nine points for five. Uh, really hard to argue with it. And Nekurat, again, like you just get two points per turn with this Nekurat guy. As long as you keep playing vampires, which of course you will, because vampires are pretty cool. Uh, you generally don't want to ex you don't want to be holding uh, low cost bronzes except for uh, round one, where you kind of want to win the round with cheaper cards as much as possible. And because of the devotion, we can use NL Conquerors, of course, that uh, serve as finishers for us. I know it sounds silly to call a 7-pointer a finisher, but we don't really have, like, true finishers. So you're probably going to be playing your strongest cards first. And uh, they're, they're, that's where it can be tricky, where you run into a control deck that want to uh, just destroy your strongest cards right away. They have hi high control. So, uh, yeah. That, that could be the, the worst. If you're running a, uh, into an extremely uh, strong control deck like Skellige, or maybe like uh, crazy with locks like Neilfgaard, uh, that would be the 
the trickiest matchup, I suppose. But uh, they don't tend to have the, the craziest points. So it is still very viable. So I think that's about it. All the units, all the cards have a very good value. And they're not even that easy to shut down. Usually you just, just put out the bleed and you just have to wait. And I suppose that is the disadvantage of it. And I suppose that is the weakness of the deck that control wise, not the best. Value generation wise, like there are decks that generate more value. Like you can just have like boost, uh, no realms that, that generates more value. But because we also have like semi removal with the bleeds, uh, it is very possible to stop them. And uh, you can really compete with like, and they tend to be extremely passive. And that's why we are super greedy. If the enemy is like super greedy, we can even step it up. One, because imagine like two Orianas with an Unseen Elder. Like everything would just get destroyed. And, and two Crimson Curses running on both rows. Like this is, this deck can scale up to be one of the greediest point decks uh, competing with uh, No Realms. And uh, has good control. So yeah, I, I started playing with the Vampires because they got updated. But like, yeah, they are uh, pretty damn fun to play. And I do recommend them. So, kick some ass. And here come some games, I guess. You know, double cross. Okay. Most likely we're gonna get shut down. So what do I not want to play? Oriana, that laugh, and the Karen Tear. I don't really want to play the Cave Troll either. Oh, that's fine. Only at that's gonna be a pretty strong round one. We can lock this. Ah, oh, of course. We have to play uh, two rounds here. We follow, let them bleed. Why that? Uh, we definitely want to win this in uh, six cards. That's why I kind of use the parent tier here. Time to get our hands dirty. And we most likely have to fight him a card down. Especially because we go first. Yeah. Give me some crappy card. I have a pretty strong hand, so I'm not sure what why I want to play here. I was expecting a more of a control deck. What the fuck? First he burned my Crimson Curse. Now he has my Unseen Elder.
Can I deal with the Unseen Elder? I can deal free damage if I um, apply bleed to it. But the bleed will tick very slowly. I can get rid of this bleed. That's a little annoying. Oh, they are. Not gonna go up. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, Proto Feather, maybe. Oh, Garcane. Not bad. Well, we can kill the Unseen Elder in two turns. I don't know if I want to play uh, Noriana here. Do we that laugh? If not that laugh, then what? We can we can play an NL Conqueror, then Gal. Now uh, we got a dead laugh here. If you believe in any gods, pray to them now. I need Garcane. I think we're gonna lose round two. Although, at this point, I, I can possibly justify I'm going for round 3 here. Should I even attempt that? Wait, this has no target. Okay. Oh, come on! It had to be this. I would have to win two cards down, and that's kind of unlikely. A win condition is Oriana here, and nothing else. Uh, maybe. It doesn't hurt to have finishers. Oh boy. But I don't only want finishers. What do we want? Mostly the Proto Flatter. 
Um, I guess leather is a little better. After that, most likely Cave Troll into Oriana. Then we start bleeding big time. And I don't even have access to Purify now. We use both Purifies round one. I guess that's fine. Uh, this is a bleed of two. Flood the next turn into AWP. Oh, come on. We can kill the Necrot and uh, try to bleed the other Necrot. We can bleed the luck guy at least next turn. Rot of leather. We might hit some bomb with bleed. And of course these guys are the finishers. Why does he have the taunt guy if he plays uh not a single card uh next to the taunt? Am I asking dumb questions here? Yeah, defender into nothing makes sense. I, I, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> like, might as well play in the back, right? Like, I understand that you play the Vilgaforts in the in the front, because that, that's how it worked, and, and the Alba. Oh no, 
<laughs> oh no, everything was uh, locked to, to Miliro. Okay, never mind that. He has no chance. He's forced into these moves. As he played what he wanted to protect last round. Hmm. Oh, he, he knows what he wants to protect. I demand justice. A trial by ordeal. Let's go! GG. Okay. We're definitely climbing and not, uh, not, uh, not the other way. GG. Okay, round one. What we don't want to play? Unseen Elder and Oriana. Everything else is, uh, Something we can play round one. Maybe kick this. And the flutter. Crimson Clurs. Okay, that's fine. We can play Queen of the Night round one as well. He's most likely playing a trap deck, isn't he? <laughs> Will he use another move? Let's boost it. Wow. He does like moving. We can play the prot of I mean the we can play the flatter and then play our Queen of the Night. Maybe establish a beast. It's a little annoying because I have a lot of units that are uh, rule specific. Fine. If you play the beast, we only get a six. Mm. Oh no! But I can follow it up with an NL Conqueror, so... That's fine. I still have a lot of points.
around and smash you. We shall conquer this world as we have conquered countless others. A 19 point lead. Also, if you play something big, the beast might go up. Well, actually not 19. 20 point lead. Nice. That is your throwaway card? What's his hand look like? Like seriously, if Pofko, an, an 8 point gold card is his least useful card Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm very curious now Um, we can throw away the Crimson Curse. One more feather, and we're done. What? I guess the Necrati shut them. We can play a cave troll in the back as a prelude to our um, Unseen Elder and perhaps double Oriana party. Oh no. The fact that the vampire is still alive is uh, kind of nice for me. It's still a tech I can use with Karen Tear, uh, Oriana, and uh, that laugh. Oof. Oh, I see. Let's play Oriana. I just tried to make sure that Oriana doesn't die.
So current goal is is to well current uh, plan is to play another Rihanna. And probably uh Crimson Curse. But another Crimson Curse. Then op. He's only bleeding by one. Okay. I just established the Crimson Curse first. This guy's dying is uh, really good for me. Although I generally want uh, a lot of uh, units bleeding out. But he has a unit he can use. Not familiar with its name. So you deal a crap ton of damage to me. Oh, what? Two damage? Oh, that's a little annoying. I can still play Oriana. But let's just establish. Not a Crimson Curse. Sure. Okay. Now we play Oriana. Who do we bleed? <clears throat> yeah, that's really annoying. Okay, we can just kill the Dolbatana sentry. It's probably for the best. Yeah, I work for the team. It's better than working for you. So this will die anyway. Garkin can deal free damage. But not boost up. Now oh, let's just play Goliath. Seems like this uh, mover elf deck doesn't have a lot of control. Well, he, he did have three points on the board. Oh, I should have sent well played. Of course, this was the time. How could I miss the chance? 
Well played, mate. Yeah. We can win games. GG. Okay. Uh, I don't want to play. We all see Nalder. Like, at least these three. So, we mulligan. I don't want to play that. I'm not sure if we need two finishers for this round. Uh, that's kind of weak. Do I even have bleeds? Uh, no. Uh, let's get this guy. Looking for some bleeds here. Uh, I go first. That's not great. I guess we can play a flutter. Can he kill the flutter? I guess. I'd rather protect the neck rat with the boost. Grab mood would be much better. <laughs> Do you truly believe that will stop me? Is that the well played? Okay. That's annoying. I can just get rid of that guy. Gale is not that valuable, I suppose. Or at least more situational. Okay, he has a big removal with the Blaze of Glory. Yeah, seems cheap enough to play whenever you can get it off. Yeah. Helps us ruin one one or Run uh, free. That's that's a decent choice either way. Not much point playing less than six cards here. Of course, if I knew that he's going to pass, I would have not played my beast. But we are playing for a long round three here. Yeah. We can mulligan these guys.
Let's pass. There's a decent chance we might keep the Anna Conqueror for uh, for round three. It's not great, but this deck doesn't really have finishers. Well, like it does have like few finishers, but it doesn't really count as finishers. Just like uh, just like big units we play at the end. So unless I draw one, yeah, no, Conqueror is fine. Yeah, we got an extra one now. Okay, that can be used as a finisher. This is fine early. What am I looking for here? We are definitely mulliganing. Uh, but who? This is a 5, plus uh, Oriana combo, plus my go up with Thrive. If we can play that last. Uh, we're probably gonna take a 1 point Oriana. So what is the plan? Cave Troll in the back. Cave Troll, double Oriana, establish a bunch of bleeds. Okay, this is the perfect time to play the cave troll because we can't bleed anything anyway. And this is super annoying because not only it has veil, which makes it immune to statuses, but also that veil doesn't prevent this unit from uh, being a target to statuses. So this will just take up a bunch of uh, bleeds and resist it. I don't really understand the, the Veil mechanic, for some reason, because it seems to be free. All the units that have Veil, they just seem to have it for free, and I don't get that. At one point, just CD Bar just decided that, you know, we're gonna add Veil into the game, but uh, we already made some units, and we're just gonna add Veil onto them as extra. Like, why? I mean, paying one point for Veil would, would be okay, but it seems like most of the units that have Veil just pay nothing for it. So it prevents statuses, but not bleeding. No, it prevents everything. All statuses. But it seems like Veil, the, the units that have Veil, like for example this Aparian Phantom, uh, they just maybe a little too good. They just seem to have Veil for free. This is super annoying. <laughs> Let's play Oriana. At least that's my take on it, but uh, I would love to hear what you guys think. I think because Veil is useless sometimes, so it's uh, tough to say how much value it actually has. That's true. And it's sometimes it's on, on units that, like, you have this guy. How much would you pay for Veil on this one? Like, near zero, right? Because the enemy will not lock this, will not bleed this intentionally. The only reason why this Veil has uh, immense power in this matchup, because I, I bleed units randomly. So a bunch of bleeds will go on this randomly, at which point it will resist it. So, the Veil on this is entirely worthless, except for the random mechanic, at which point it becomes, uh, like, OP.
at least in this matchup. Maybe we can we could play one quartermaster for another purify. We have two. Uh, what are you talking about? Which one is the quartermaster? I know that we can purify well. It's just usually not worth it. Okay, let's play another Oriana. Oh, Valtown Bronze with Purify? That's probably not worth it. I have the... Feast of Blood in the deck, which purifies, damages, and uh, bleeds. I have to Purify in the deck, so... That, that's gotta be good enough. Yeah, let's hit the ship. <clears throat> it comes to that point where, like, I'm like almost questioning if I, if I should use Crimson Curse because usually we're just killing everything we bleed anyway. I mean, uh, I do value Purify, but like, we want to purify tanks, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. We purify defenders. Or maybe very useful units, or very like I might purify that if I had purify. It's probably not worth it still. So far, Vel has absorbed bleed twice, Harald uh, once, and Raider once. Mm. But it's random. All the way, all the bleed can go on these these guys. At which point, uh, it will have a very significant uh, effect on the outcome of the game. Is it giving up? Okay, we're good. Apparently he had no way to get my Orianas. GG. Oh, look at that. Who said that I'm climbing backwards? Last I checked, 4 was, uh, well... Uh, this just proves... Well, rank 4 is better than rank 5. Uh, I can't really say that uh, 4 is better than 5, but... Sure, rank 4 is better than rank 5. The bleed took his last ice charge. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. 